Yeah, the differences in Formula E, wow. Um, uh, so, I'll start with tyres. So, that, that's a massive thing. To be honest, tyres is generally the, the biggest thing you need to understand um, in motorsports. Any category, pretty much, how to get the most out of the tyres. That's where the performance is. That's what's holding you, touching you to the ground. Um, the tyres in Formula E, they're obviously treaded tyres. Uh, they're all weather tyres. They work in the wet and dry. That means that the compound that we use is vastly different to a standard motorsport compound that's either for the full dry or, f or, or the wet. Um, a normal motorsport tyre will want to work in the region, I mean it varies massively, but in the region of say 70 to 95 degrees Celsius, something like that. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but that's generally where their prime optimum operating temperature is. Um, in Formula E, from what we understand, we don't get much data um, and we can't gather data like that on the race weekends, but we can sometimes in testing. The, the operating window is a lot lower than that, you know. You go out, they're cold. We don't have tyre warmers. Um, we get an outlap in, in Super Pole and then you've got your one time lap to do. There's The tyre the, the has been designed for that situation as well. Um, or they designed that situation once they worked out what the tyres did. But um, in that one timed lap, you can overheat your tyres. You can go from having the tyres in the right window to cooking the rear tyres potentially with your 250 kilowatts. You can, if you have a few too many slides, you can you can cook the rears and you start losing time because you haven't got as much grip um, and decent chunks of time as well. And if in, in testing, when you do multiple laps, you know, the tyres start to overheat really quite substantially. They start to feel squidgy. Anybody who's, who's had any racing experience will or might know what a wet tyre feels like when it starts to dry out. You start to really get the car squirming around underneath you. The tyres are too hot. Um, it's a very strange feeling. We don't get it to quite that extent in Formula E because they're designed to work pretty well in the dry, but... Um, it certainly starts to feel partly like that um, in, in hot conditions. You have to adapt your driving to be a little bit more patient and work with the tyre. Um, then, I guess same sticking with tyres, but changing the format from qualifying to the race, and this goes for a couple of other things, um, particularly the brakes. In the race, we start from a standing start and just race. You know, there's no warm-up lap, there's no ability to get a feeling for what the, the balance is, uh, get heat in the tyres, there's nothing. Um, we've sat on the grid, on the dummy grid, for half an hour. Um, if the, your lap to the grid was at any relatively decent speed, you've lost any temperature you had. Um, so yeah, going into a race situation, high pressure, off the start where everyone's together, but you've got stone cold brakes, stone cold tires. Um, the brakes don't work very well when they're brand uh, when they're cold. Um, they're carbon discs, and the, anyone who's driven those knows that they're relatively poor. Um, they're very grabby, very very easy to lock up. The brakes themselves, but also easy to lock up because your tires are stone cold. Um, they do need some temperature in them to start to be in, in a decent um, grip grip range. So that's utterly bizarre in Formula E, and you can't really practice that pressured environment, move, working out where to go in a racing situation until you're actually in it. Um, you can't replicate that on a test, on a private test day. Um, then we've got the the braking system itself. Uh, we've got fly by wire brakes on the rear, um, so that the the sorry brake by yeah brake by wire. Um, system works out how much regen is available and how much mechanical braking at the rear needs to be um, introduced to counteract the lack of regen um, so the regen is capped at uh, 250 kilowatt the um, the kilowatt changes relative to your speed wheel speed motor speed um, and so the the torque is relatively stable. Um, we tr we try to do that. I think 
I'm, I'm losing myself here, but um, don't get drivers to, to explain technical systems on the cars. <laughs> but um, when, you, when you've got full state of charge, you don't have full regen. Um, same with every single car across Formula E. The regen level ramps up as you as you reduce your state of charge to um, 75, 80 percent, um, and so the rear brakes work fully at the start of the race um, or at the start of practice if you've got full state of charge, and then reduce the the systems are reducing the amount of mechanical brakes as you get more re regen. Obviously, the regen only works on the rear axle. That's something they're looking at changing for, for Gen 3 in a few years' time to get, um, I think, fr a regen on the front axle as well to be able to balance that system out and make the whole thing a lot more efficient because a lot of the energy is, is lost through the front brakes um, because of the, the way the car pitches on the brakes. So, um, yeah, getting used to those systems is, is somewhat bizarre. Um, regen has an effect on the rear wheel uh, temperatures because start of the race you have hot rear discs four five six seven hundred degrees celsius uh, depending on the track that obviously dissipates into the tire into the rear wheel rim then you lose that internal heating um your regen level is is covering all of the braking pretty much in the race at most circuits then you don't have any more of the heating effect so your rear tires sometimes drop during the race um or don't rise anywhere near as much as the front tires. So, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, the, the mind has so many different things to deal with. Um, and I haven't even got into talking about energy management, coasting, understanding how to drive efficiently, um, learning the bumpy street tracks. I mean, there's so, so much to get your head around. Um, I've always gone into actually a relatively large amount of detail on some of those points, but you know, there are genuinely probably 20, 25 big points that are massively different to a conventional race car that to do um, a really good race weekend, you need to understand all of them um, and have experience of all of them to be able to react correctly in each of the situations during a weekend. So it's, um, it's a fascinating series and I think everyone who I've heard talk about Formula E who's been in Formula E is is of the opinion that it's the, the most difficult formula out there um, and I think those who aren't involved in Formula E sometimes struggle to understand that maybe a little bit because yes the, the, the speeds that we're going are not massively high in, in motorsport terms um, put us on, on a conventional circuit and we wouldn't be that fast um, but when you mix all of these complexities with city driving on bumpy street tracks which are tight and twisty um, and you've got big manufacturers throwing a lot of engineering talent at it to, to try and come up with good solutions you've got some of the best drivers in the world um, going flat out attacking things as much as they can it's uh, yeah it's a really really difficult championship really difficult